Yeah, there we go. Okay, share. Copy. Okay, uh, annoy 600 people, yes please. Grab that, go to canvas, make announcement, do that. Five, four, week seven. And publish. Hey, hello guest. Hello Benchman returns and hello Ricardo something or other. Hello everybody, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Give me some stats, please. Seven viewers. Hello sub crew. Yes, perhaps chicken. Here we go again for the last time for a couple of weeks. Actually, we get we get a few weeks off after this. Ah, is it French? I'm glad I didn't try, so that I don't butcher an entire country's language. <laughs> you excited about the break? I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing you're more excited about the break than another live stream. I choose to believe that the woo is to do with the live stream, though. Fifty-fifty, I'll take it. I'll call that a win. How am I doing? That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, ma. I don't know why I'm answering. We will discuss A3 in the stream in like 15 minutes. There you go. Hey Gabriel, how you doing? I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last name. Um, how are you guys doing running into the break? Have you got much left to do? Are you done? Is this your last thing? Do you have stuff tomorrow? Are you, are you on break mode already? <laughs> hey Ryan, this is, this is better. This way I can actually answer it. Okay, so, uh... We will talk a little bit about Assessment 3 during this live stream, but if you have any questions about your Assessment 3 stuff, please throw them up. I'm more than happy to answer them now. That's kind of what I like to use these couple of minutes for. So, Ryan, to answer your question. Uh, if somebody has the wrong document title, that's fine. You guys can still mark it. It will still get... So I put all of this in, in the announcement, didn't I? In the Assessment 3 FAQs... I'm pretty sure it says this. Maybe it doesn't say this. Maybe that's something today. All right, sorry. Um, 
if an assessment three has the wrong title, like it just says assessment two or engineering report or something, you should still mark it. You should still mark it properly for two reasons. One is it's fine that it has, as far as you're concerned, it's fine. It has the wrong title. On my end, they won't get moderated in the same way, which will be greatly to their disadvantage, but it won't automatically result in a zero. The other reason though that you need to mark it is because you will be rated as a reviewer. So if you just throw the towel in on one of these, then that person will go, well, this reviewer was really shit. And then that will hurt your grade. Not a lot, but it will a little bit. You are to some extent marked on how good of a reviewer you are. So don't throw the towel in even on a report that's not done a great job solely so that it doesn't hurt you in any way. But to your point of, is this person not just going to get zero anyway? What's the point? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily. But even if they were, don't hurt yourself. Them uploading it as a PDF is super sus. So what I want you to do is report that and send it to me. So I want you to do uh, just as a, no, as an email, because this might get reported to academic integrity. Please send me that particular report and I will investigate it because the only reason I can see that somebody would upload something as a PDF is if they're deliberately trying to hide something. So I'll investigate that one for academic integrity. Um, hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, Ryan, I'm more than happy to try again to, to add some more detail here. Oh, uh, Maths 1110 exam and 1003 exam. That sucks, guys. I mean, it makes sense that you put a midterm exam right on the last possible day. That gives you guys the most amount of time to study for it and everything. But you're obviously not, uh, you're not getting to clock out early, I take it. Physics test tomorrow and Comp 1010 assessment due Sunday. Ooh. All right. Well, I won't be ending this stream with go and enjoy your break then, I guess. Oh, and your 2003 open book test will be the biggest bludge of the semester. Be careful about that. Open book tests are generally really hard. Um, when the university started going to open book tests, student grades went down significantly. Uh, which may sound, might at first sound strange, but it's actually really obvious. If it's a closed book exam, we can ask you really simple questions because we know you don't have resources to go with them. If it's an open book exam, we can no longer ask simple questions because the simple questions you just copy and paste an answer to. So now we have to ask more creative, more difficult questions. In general, students suffer when exams become open book. It becomes worse for them. It depends. Obviously, if you've got a terrible person setting the exam and they do a closed book exam where they ask you to memorize a heap of stuff, that's just a shit exam. Most of your academics aren't terrible academics, though. So most of the time when it's closed book, they'll give you the resources you need and they'll ask fairly simple questions. When it's open book, though, unfortunately, often it gets a little bit harder for students. So I hope that it's a bludge for you. I hope, guessed that you smash your Andrew 1003. Just, oh yeah, open book exam is something to be a little careful about. Flag it with me, Carlos. Uh, I've seen this before. I, I, I may even know who it is, but send it to me as... Follow the instructions in the A3 FAQs. Just send it to me as an email. I got told by my tutor that this week's milestones are due next week during the holidays. Is this true? That's absolutely what you should do. You should set a milestone this week that you will complete in seven days, seven to 10 days, and you should absolutely do it. Uh, I said that in the admin video last week, right? So I already told you all of that in the admin video on Friday. If you want to be successful in the course, you should absolutely do that. You, you don't... And then you should set another milestone for week eight yourself internally within your team, and you should complete that by week eight. If you do those things, you'll do most teams, the overwhelming majority of teams who do that, do well in their project. And the ones who don't often really struggle uh, to get their project up and running. We won't be checking them during the break, but the, the best possible advice I can give you right now is to do exactly that. And we'll talk about it, I think, sometime in the stream. <clears throat> 
how much lower would somebody get if they used their own title? It depends. It depends on the, how the moderation works. So the moderation is non-trivial. Um, and there, it is possible that they'll end up in a similar spot. It's possible that they'll end up in a very different spot. But they can't... They can't benefit from the secondary moderation if they haven't named it correctly. Yeah, I heard, Samuel, that you talked to some of them. Um, they're going to be very busy for the next couple of weeks. But yes, I heard that you talked to some of them. Pretty keen. Uh, yes, it all looks like it's going to be good. Let's get to the end of this semester and then let's make it a thing. How am I doing for time? Is it... Oh, it's only two past. Are there any other questions? Is there anything else I can help anybody with? A3 questions, anything like that? If you want to share them now, I am more than happy. Otherwise, we can talk shit until five past and then we'll get into it. Weird question. Why is the best mark you can give mostly good? Good question. Why is the best mark, why in the A3 rubric does it cap at mostly good and not entirely good? Uh, this is a little bit of a Dylan thing. And it's a little bit of a way of making your life easier as a marker. You can be indefinitely pedantic when it comes to marking reports. I can get a, a paper that's been written by brilliant academics who wrote this as a team and spent hundreds of hours on it and still find things that I think are wrong about the way they wrote it. It's cleared the bar of mostly good. It cleared that bar a long time ago, but there's like, it's just turtles all the way down. You can get infinitely, infinitely, infinitely pedantic. At the stage where you guys are at in your learning journey of learning the communication skills, we don't necessarily need you so far down the infinitely pedantic as much as we need people to be able to go, you're pretty good at this, but you're kind of rubbish at this other thing. Um, this is where you should focus your attention and your work. Otherwise, you will end up spending 100 hours reviewing every report and providing a lot of feedback that doesn't actually necessarily benefit the reader as much as you might think. There's a... There is a bit of an art form to writing those, the wording in those particular things. Um, and I'm not saying my wording is brilliant. It's not, but it was just meant to guide you um, and stop you having to be like, I need to go and investigate every single line of this entire document to see if a single one of them is spaced differently. You can be like, I couldn't find any spacing. I'm going to say it's mostly good. M many spacing errors. I'm going to say it's mostly good. Um, I do not actually know any good podcasts. I'm, I'm just listening to trash at the moment to help me turn my brain off, to be honest. What I'm listening to as podcasts at the moment is recaps of Age of Empires games, um, so that I can turn my brain off. I'm not, I'm not in a condition to answer that question. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'll watch the Knights game tonight. I think I will curl up in a ball and try and sleep. That's my exciting plan. How are we doing? Let's check. That is okay. That is okay. Hey, and it's five past. So, we can officially get started. Let's get into this. This isn't... I don't think this is going to take two hours. In fact, I don't think it's going to take us anywhere near two hours. But as always, the back end of the stream will be open for Q&A. So, we're going to hit a little bit of admin. And it's like two slides of admin. And then we're going to do a little bit of talking about your milestones. And then a little bit of talking about your assessment three. To answer some of the stuff we've already been kind of talking about. In terms of admin, so you are all aware, the mid-semester recess is next week. Um, you will have two weeks where you will not have any scheduled classes. As you are already aware from what we've been doing in the chat, that doesn't mean you won't have work to do. It just means you won't have classes to attend. So as I spoke about in the admin video already, use this as a time to catch up if you have fallen behind. And that's like totally an understandable thing to do, right? You start semester and we sprint for seven weeks straight. 
you may not feel 100% on top of all your subjects right now. That's fine. You have the break to catch up or you have the break to actually hopefully start to look ahead and make sure the five weeks after you come back, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, aren't too bad and that you're in a good position for that. So use it to position yourself well, also use it to have a break. It is absolutely worth scheduling some time off for yourself so that you can breathe. Um, and I know a lot of you will use it to work a whole bunch. That's, that's fine. So two weeks, don't completely turn off for the entirety of the two weeks but do take at least some time to yourself. The things you're going to get from me is your week eight lecture will probably come out, I want to say tomorrow, but maybe tomorrow, maybe early in the break. It'll, it'll be ready to go and I'll release it then. It's a teamwork lecture. It's just how to split your team up and do some project management and stuff like that. Um, and that way you can watch it through the break if you've got a bit of time or you can watch it at the start of week eight if you would prefer. We're also hopefully going to release a bunch of information about test day. So my job next week is I'm going to meet with all of your tutors and we're going to sit down and do our final little bit of planning for test day in, in week 12. And if there's any information we need to share with you about that fact, I will share it with you hopefully at the end of the first week of the break or possibly in the first live stream back or something like that so that you have that information and we can do some Q&A if we need to. So you'll get a little bit of information from me um, about your test day. And I've had this question only once, but I think it's worth, worth throwing out there. My plan is for your brief for your final reports to be issued in week 10. If I can get you something earlier, I will. I'm going to work on it during the break as well. So if I can get it earlier, I'll give it to you earlier, but if not, I'll give it to you uh, by week 10. So you'll have it by then. No, so you don't have lectures over the two weeks. Um, when I say I'll give you your, I'll give you your week eight lecture. So your, your lecture that you're meant to watch, you know, for when you come back, I'll give that to you at the start so that you can get ahead if you want to get ahead. But no, you shouldn't have lectures or tutorials or computer labs or anything like that for any of your subjects over the break. Cool. I've been asked this question a few times over the last couple of days. Um, it's normally in the, the form of, um, do we have to budget for this particular cost of our project? Now, when I talk about project costs here, I'm mainly talking to the design and build project. So the mechs, the aeros, the civils, the enviros, the d -cells, possibly the surveyors, th those projects. I'm not really talking as much here to the robots and the softwares and stuff. Um, but when it comes to costing, I'm going to ask you for three numbers. How, how much did it cost you to make this one? And that cost might be really low because you used heaps of recycled materials and i was like yeah that's fine i don't really care or it might be really high because you tried a bunch of shit that failed miserably and you're like oh this was a disaster we shouldn't have done this we shouldn't have done this we shouldn't have done this and that's fine and we know that now the really important cost will then be okay dylan wants to go and make one of these tomorrow he thinks it's good he wants to make the first one of these to come off the production line how much does that one cost? That's the really important number. We'll also ask you, if we decide to put it into production and make a thousand of them, how much will they cost then? And in that case, you might be like, well, we needed 20 bolts, but they only come in packs of 100. So you have to buy a pack of 100. And Dylan would have to buy a pack of 100. But once you're at mass production, then that pack of 100, you get to use it four times. So you can divide that price by four. You can use, you know, just the number that you actually needed out of the packet at scale. So we'll ask you for those three numbers. You're probably not at a point where you need to care too much about it yet, but people have been asking me, so I figured it was worth letting everybody know this information. I'll reiterate this again in week eight or nine or something when we're a bit closer to it being relevant. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's talk about your milestones for a little bit. So assessment four is in full swing. You've been doing your milestones. You've been doing from a couple of weeks now. Most of you would have had a milestone meeting this week, or if you haven't had your class, you'll have it 
No, well, you all will have had it, right? Because you either had it this week, or if you're a Friday class, you actually had it last week. So all of you have had a milestone meeting now. Some some information for you. Um, the milestones go over six weeks, 2% a week, and it's out of 10, which means we can take your best five out of six milestones to make your grade up. So if you totally fucking tanked one of the weeks, you weren't ready, you weren't prepared, you didn't have your milestone sheet, you just you just screwed it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We mark the best five of six, okay? So you get one freebie where you get to go, lesson learned, I shouldn't have done that, pick myself back up, move on from here, okay? Something that not all of you seem to have realized is this is an assessment task, meaning it's due at five minutes past the hour. So if you walk in late, expect to get given zero. Um, same thing is the piece of paper. The piece of paper is what we need to mark, okay? So you have to have the piece of paper because that's the thing we have signed and agreed to that this documents what your assessable item is. I understand that that's been particularly annoying over the last week where we've had the whole online setting of milestones and stuff, but moving forward, you must physically have the piece of paper every week. If you don't have it, expect to get zero. That's what we are marking. And you should, if you've all had a milestone meeting now, be looking at how you want that interaction to go. Make sure as your tutor walks over to your table, you are as a team organized and you know how you want that to go. Who's talking first? What are we running through? Do we have questions we want to ask back so that you can get value out of that meeting? It's really important and we're trying our best to help you. This whole process is designed to help you. That's its goal. Help us help you by making these meetings as efficient as possible. And then we can give you more help. If the meeting is inefficient, we can't help you as much. We won't have as, no, um, uh, as much time. Sorry. If you can't make it. So I just said, you know, you have to be on time. You have to have the physical piece of paper. Some of you will experience adverse circumstances. You'll be sick. You'll be in, you know, your car will break down. You will whatever. In that circumstance... Post your milestone to Discord before your class starts. Uh, tag your teammates so they know what's going on. So when I come around to mark you, they can be like, so-and-so isn't here today, but we have their milestone. We are ready to present it on their behalf. If that happens, you can still be awarded grades for, that, for completing that milestone. If you did it and somebody just presents it on your behalf because you are unwell, that's totally fine. We have no problems with that. That's 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 fine. I'm I'm happy. So you will still get the marks, uh, but you know you have to do that with enough time for your team to be prepared to do it. Same thing kind of goes the other way. If you're there as a team and one of your team members isn't present, make sure you write a milestone for them so that they can complete it for the next week. We just talked about that. And I'm going to come and mark your milestones. I don't quite know when. My goal is to mark every single team at least once. And when I do that, my goal is to also come and wear my hat of, I'm the person who's writing the test day criteria for week 12. Talk to me. What do you want to know? What do you want? Do you want to influence how it's going to be marked on test day? Ask for as much help as you possibly can when I come around to do that milestone meeting with you. So I won't be able to get to every single team in the same week because I am occasionally I am literally triple and I think at one stage in the week I'm quadruple booked. So I'd love to get to everybody in week nine or ten, but it'll realistically be either either week eight or nine or ten. And for some of you, I might get to you more than once, but I'll come around and mark your milestones um, and I'll be there to provide as much help as I possibly can be. So make use of that help. Be ready in weeks eight, nine, and 10 to potentially have me mark you. And obvious things like be on time and have the piece of paper and all of that. The other thing you need to think about though is when that happens, your tutor will not be there with me. Which means if you write an, uh, an ambiguous milestone in one of the weeks and I don't understand what your deliverable is supposed to be, that won't end well for you. So make sure you're writing clear milestones, which you should be writing clear deliverables anyway. But just just to reiterate that point. So make use of that meeting. I am there to help you, but I'm also there to do some marking. Um, cool. 
And then I think finally, the only other thing that I want to say about this is moving into the break with your milestones. It's extremely difficult to write a milestone from now to three weeks in the future. What I would recommend you all do is schedule a team meeting in the break that you all commit to making. Somewhere in the middle. Do your milestones that you've written out this week. Try to get them done by that particular team meeting. Internally present them to each other. Have a discussion. Where are we up to? What do we want to do next? Self-set some milestones yourselves. You don't need us necessarily to do this. You can go through this process yourselves and be like, all right, cool. You do this. I'm going to do this. They're the next steps we need to take by the time we get in in week eight and go and do them. That is the thing that makes teams successful between now and the break. I don't necessarily think you need to do it for the first week of the break, then the second week of the break, then week eight. You can if you like. There's absolutely no reason not to do that. But if you just do it once in the break, that's probably sufficient to keep your momentum going. Ah, finally, the last thing that I do want to do is tell you that you're doing pretty well. Not everyone, but the overwhelming majority of you are actually doing really, really well with the milestone assessments. They're normally a bit difficult at the start, and yours were particularly difficult at the start because of all the public holidays. And not everybody's got it right. Like a few people have showed up and just went, I don't have milestone at all. Uh, okay, that's not great. But most of you have been fucking spectacular, to be honest. Um, I've been checking in with my tutors and be like, is everything going fine? Are you having any issues? They're like, this is great. Everybody had their stuff. They had their sheets. They had clear deliverables. This is, this is going brilliantly. This, the milestone assessment, given the fact that, you know, week six was whatever the hell week six was with all the public holidays, honestly, probably as well as this assessment has ever gone ever in the history of 1500. So really, really, really well done. I spend a lot of time going, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. I probably don't spend enough enough time saying, well done. What you're doing is amazing. Keep being awesome. Cool. That was what I wanted to sort of say about that. Um, I'll just quickly check the chat in case I have missed anything that is worth addressing. You're going to tank this week, Gabriel? Then that's okay. Then you're going to tank this week. And it happens. Uh, the whole point here is like, cool. I got hit. Get up off the mat come back next week, give it another go. We don't ever let, you know, one bad week contaminate the entire assessment here. It's, you get a freebie, let it go, cool, come back, do again, do better next time. How do we balance the work as a team? If other team members have access to resources, we don't like 3D printing. Yeah, this is a really good question. How do you do that? And particularly, probably applicable to the prototyping slide here as well. Um is how do, how do we do this type of stuff? How do we divvy up some of these roles when we have an unbalanced set of resources? Part of the point of the milestone assessment is acknowledging that the resources are not always going to be balanced. That's the reality of the world. They're not. Somebody might have access to a workshop or a shed or something like that. And the whole team might be like, look, we're going to lean pretty hard on so-and-so this week, and they're going to do more work than everybody else because they have access to more equipment and they're happy to put their hand up and do that. And that all gets written down. And then we go, okay, and then the week after that, or you know, week eight after the break or whatever, we as a team are all going to have to acknowledge that so-and-so has been carrying this team for the last little while. And we kind of need to give them smaller milestones for the next couple of weeks. And we're going to up our game when we come back or when the project changes away from this type to that type or something like that. That's a very common thing to do in the real world. And the milestone set assessments are meant to help facilitate that. Specifically, though, 3D printing doesn't matter whether you have access, you all have access to my 3D printers, go into the Discord, go to the 3D printing and Eng 1500 channel and go and follow the steps there. Everybody has access to those printers. So that one is easy to solve. Um, S. Smith, do we still have to upload it to Discord if someone in our group presents it on our behalf? Yeah, put it on Discord. Absolutely put your milestones on Discord because I can then go and check them. And if there's ever any ambiguity between your tutor and your team and your whatever, if it's in Discord, I can go and see it and I can say, nope, I don't care that the tutor didn't write it down. It's there, it's on time, it's got the required information, whatever. You, you should chuck everything in Discord just as a backup anyway. 
Um, a lot of teams make a shared folder, like on a shared drive, and then they'll have all of their milestones that they just put in that every week, and they just pin a link to that in their Discord channel, and then all their milestones are there. It's a really, really helpful thing to do, particularly if like a team falls apart towards the end, which does happen sometimes. It's really nice to be able to see the the paper trail of work that has been completed. Can you print over the break? Absolutely, you can print over the break. In terms of collecting prints, I'll probably nominate a couple of days over the break that I'm in, and I'll be like, hey, I'm going to be on Wednesday at 3 p.m. You'll be able to pick your prints up. I will be at ES126 or something like that, and then I'll just stand there and hand out the prints to everybody who's there at 3 p.m., and then I'll go back to my other jobs for that week. So I'll try and get three or four days through the break where I'm there to hand them out, but you can absolutely print over the break. Um, okay. Prototyping is the place where you guys should be up to right now. I know you're still somewhat in a design phase and that's okay. Our design phase and our prototyping phases are meant to overlap. That is deliberate. If you watch the prototyping lecture, I'm very clear about that fact. So you should use this break time to start building something. Whether you know your final design or not, doesn't matter. Start building something. When you do that, be careful to make sure that you can separate your prototyping budget from your production budget. So yes, you might tinker with some stuff and that might be a thing that you go, all right, I, I bought five different materials here. I tried them all. This is the one we're going to carry forward into our project. You don't have to budget for those other four in the price that it would cost Dylan to make one because Dylan doesn't need to go and buy those other four, right? He just needs to buy the one correct one. So you don't have to stress about this, but document that, keep it logged as to what, what you spend on prototyping versus what goes into the actual product. And when you do this, when you prototype, the whole point of prototyping is to learn things about your design. So make sure when you do it, you document it in some way and you test your prototypes to learn something from them. Sometimes this is very clear and obvious and easy to do, and sometimes it's less clear and obvious and easy to do. And what you might be testing with your prototype is how annoying is this thing to make? And your measurement is you writing down how annoyed you are at the end of producing this thing. And that's okay. It's a weird thing to measure, and I get that. But you should still document those things when you do your prototyping as much as you possibly can so that you can then share them with your team to help make design decisions. It's super important. A lot of people will dump over the break. They'll dump 40 hours into making stuff. And at the end, I'll be like, cool, what'd you learn? And they'll be like, I don't know, but we made a bunch of stuff. It's like, okay. How are we going to turn all of this hard work into meaningful, productive steps in the project? write it down as you go, write down your thoughts and your whatever as you go. And whenever you can test something, test something. We can also help you with testing stuff after the break as needed. That's actually something that I can possibly provide you quite a lot of help with is, hey, we've got these prototypes. How do we test them to work out which one is best? Ask those questions to your tutor or to me and we can help you with that. Okay. Hopefully you guys are doing all okay with that. Um, if you have any questions about the assessment three stuff, uh, about the assessment four stuff, about the milestones, please chuck them in the chat uh, or about your projects or the prototyping or the break or any of that type of stuff, please let me know. Otherwise, I will move on to the uh, assessment three stuff of which I've got, I don't know, five or six slides. And then that's all we've got to get through today. How are we going for time? 20 past, 24 past. All right, not too bad. Okay, um, we can do questions at the end as well. Like, this is not speak now, forever, hold your peace. <sighs> Assessment three. So, um, the due date is set. It is it is solidified. I told you in the last stream that I would be moving it, and then I had my mouse issue. It, it is now set. It is due at midnight on Tuesday the 16th, which is the first Tuesday of the break. It was supposed to be due tomorrow. I, I would... I would say, normally, you should make sure you get it finished by Friday because that's the right thing to do. But I acknowledge now that you have got, what was it? A Maths 1110 exam, an Eng 1003 exam. Some of you have a comp thing. If you need to wait until like Saturday or Sunday or Monday to get this done, that's 
fine. I have no problems with that. Just make sure it's finished by Tuesday. And you all learned how difficult that Canvas portal got when it got busy. So Tuesday, I'm assuming, is going to be a shit show in that Canvas portal. I reckon it's going to be super duper slow and painful to use. So please be sure that you get this done by Tuesday and you leave yourself a bunch of time to do it well, okay? I'll send you a reminder on Friday to do it as well. I understand you have some other things you might want to prioritize, but yeah, please, please make sure you do it. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, there will be no extensions in the same way that uh, there were no extensions for the first submission. There will be no extensions for this. So if you don't get it done, you don't get it done. Because what will happen as of midnight on that Tuesday is all reviews will be released to everybody. So at one minute past midnight, what will become Wednesday morning, you should be able to see all of your reviews and you should be able to go and read all of those reviews and then rate your reviewer. And that will happen one minute after the due date. So again, no extensions, get it done. Please remember to fill out the form. I don't think... I don't think everybody's remembered to fill out the Microsoft form when they've done it. I will send you that as a reminder as well uh, to make sure that you do do that as well. Cool. We've spoken about this. You'll be able to rate your reviewers um, as of mid one minute past midnight on Wednesday morning. So you'll be able to go in, see all the comments that people left, see the rankings that they gave you, and you'll be able to rate them. Were they helpful? Were they not helpful? If they were helpful, if they gave you marks, and if they gave you a couple of comments, then great. They were super duper helpful. That's that's excellent. Give give them all the thumbs up in the world there. If they didn't give you any comments, or they gave you, um, or, or I, I want to say like bad comments. When I say bad comments, I mean unhelpful comments. Even if they are negative, they could still be helpful. If they gave you unhelpful comments then flag them as a bad reviewer. If they give you any comments that are offensive, racist, sexist, homophobic, anything like that, I don't know why they would, but if they do, uh, let me know and I will do my best to have them kicked out of university because that's fucked. Um, cool. Okay, I've gotten a bunch of questions about uh, what do I do if I get a report that's not anonymous, that has a name in it somewhere. I've put this particular post in the Assessment 3 FAQs channel. Yeah, A3 FAQs is this post. This text is directly taken from there. Um, do you have any questions about this in any way? Does it make sense? I haven't really had any questions since I've posted this, so I assume it makes sense to anybody, but I thought this was an opportunity where I should chuck it up and be like, are we all okay with this? Or should I clarify more? Because this, these last two points were edits that I put on after I made this post and then a few p people asked me some questions. So I made some edits. Um, I'm happy to continue making edits to make it as clear as possible. I, is anybody confused about any of this at this stage? Uh, if so, please throw your questions in the chat. If not, we're cool. It's good. I'm hoping. It seems to be working um, at this stage. So... couple of other questions that, again, I've tried wherever I could to mention these, but I know that sometimes it just gets lost in the noise. We did allow, we did say that they shouldn't, people shouldn't use um, personal pronouns. To dig into this a little bit more, the competency, sec the competency section that was allowable, they were allowed to use eyes and stuff in the competency section because maybe it's personally I really struggled with the saw, but everybody else in my group was fine with it, is a totally valid learning in that case. And that needs to be personal in order for it to make sense. So personal pronouns are acceptable in the competency section. Another thing that I've gotten a couple of questions on that actually really warrants a little bit more of a discussion is the concept of the inclusive we. So when you say we, when somebody uses we in a report, or just actually, I should roll back. In English, we have two different versions. We actually technically have three because we have the royal we, but don't worry about that. 
there are two different versions of the term we. There's the inclusive we and the exclusive we. We are going to the game on the weekend, meaning me and my friends, excluding somebody else. Versus we are all... We are all part of N1500, is both me and all of you, right? That's an inclusive use of we. When I say I'm meeting with the tutors on the week uh, uh, through the break and we are going to um, talk about demo day stuff, that's an exclusive we. I am excluding you from the group of we in that case. Sometimes when we write reports, and you've got to be really careful with this, it's a very difficult thing to do. I don't encourage you to do it. But sometimes when you do write, particularly stuff like textbooks, it's quite common to use an inclusive we, where you mean you as the author and the reader. So this is quite common when we see stuff like equations and go, you know, the this equation is presented, blah, blah, blah. And as we can determine this parameter and this parameter, we can then conclude blah, blah, blah. And that's using an inclusive we of both the author and the reader. And that's generally considered acceptable. It's confusing, and I acknowledge that. So I'm not saying this is something that you guys need to be super duper aware of, but a few people have asked me this question, and I thought, I thought it would be an interesting little rabbit hole to go down a little bit of... The hard and fast rule of you should never see I or our or whatever in a report is generally true. But it's not always, and the English language is infinitely complicated, but one of the things is inclusive we's, or the inclusive language within a report can actually sometimes be a valid and very good thing to do, particularly when you are trying to teach. So... I hope that was a somewhat interesting rant about the word we that you probably didn't need. Where should we add feedback? <laughs> Exclusive we, because I don't add feedback. About grammatical mistakes. Oh, this is the other question. This is the other thing. I very specifically didn't put that in the report, right? Nowhere are you assessing a report on its spelling and its grammar. And that is not an accident because I didn't want you going down these rabbit holes. You don't need to comment on spelling or grammar. That's very deliberate. You might want to comment on like the personal pronouns and you might be able to in the section where you talk about is this in the comment section where you say, is this appropriate for the target audience? You could talk about it there. You could say the grammar of this report was so bad um, so I, I should actually read the rest of your sentence here. I have a report which has multiple missed capital letters, missed full stops, commas, misspelt words. Okay, so the question then becomes, does it matter? So yeah, you've got, you've got a whole bunch of grammatical and spelling mistakes in a report. Does it matter? Did it affect your ability to learn from it and understand the content? If it's so bad that it creates confusion, then yeah, it's really, really, really bad. And you should absolutely talk about it in the, is this appropriate for the target audience? Because you as a target audience were confused. So that's where it belongs. But if it's like, they use the American spelling versus the British spelling of something, who gives a fuck? Like, it's fine um, because it doesn't create confusion. If it creates confusion though, it's very bad for the target audience, put it there. But you're deliberately not marking on spelling and grammar. That was that was that was intentional. You can't help but be paranoid you used your name. So in these situations where you're you're in a position where you're worried about something like that, what you do is you control F for it at the end. You write your whole report and anything you are worried that you might have done left a comment in there or used a name or something like that, just control F, search, put your own name in, put the name of your team members in, put that type of stuff in, pick those things up. I always, always, before I submit a large document or something like that, control F for a whole bunch of things that I know I'm likely to do really badly in a report. Um, like leave note to self um, is a thing that I might write. So I'll go and I'll search for that. You have a report that has no figures at all. Ooh, therefore has no captions. 
One of the criteria is about captions. How do you want me to mark the criteria? Good question. Good question. Normally, if I was marking this, I would give them zero for that because an engineering report with no figures in it is a very, very, very bad engineering report. So what you should probably do is put them roughly in the middle of the scale. Now, there deliberately is also no middle point on your scale. You have to make a call. Is it more good than bad or more bad than good? I would personally say more bad than good all engineering reports should should contain figures. And you can quote me on that. Control F is one of the best inventions ever. I agree. Cool. Uh, we've spoken about this, but I want to reiterate it again. If so, you have a report that has the wrong file name convention, so they've named it Assessment 2 or something like that, you should still mark it. You should leave a comment for them saying you named your file wrong. But you should still mark it because uh, you are being graded as a reviewer. And so if you don't, it will end up looking bad for you. The, the aspect of them, it being bad for them, <laughs> is that they won't be moderated in the same way as everybody else will be. So you guys will all be moderated in your grades in a couple of different ways to to basically make it work out as in your favor as I possibly can. So they won't have one of the moderations applied to them because they don't have the correct file name convention, which means they haven't been sorted, which means they're not eligible to be marked. But you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. If it's not anonymous, so if, if they tell you their name, you do have to worry about it. You have to report that to me. If they name their file incorrectly, just call them out for it and then move on and mark them like they're normal. And I think these are my final two. So if you suspect that it has had some chat GPT done in order to help write it, please report it to me. And if I also agree with you, I will flag it for academic misconduct. You, be aware, you can flag it with me. That's not a death sentence to this person. I will then process it. And if and only if I believe that the person has done the wrong thing, I will then flag it for academic misconduct and then a third person will come in and if and only if they also believe they've done the wrong thing, will that person get kicked out of university or whatever. So you can flag stuff if you suspect chat GPT. Don't think that that's like you're being judged during an executioner there. You're absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> and also, I've already had a few of these, but if you get what you think is a non-attempt, like, I can't mark this because it's two pages long and those pages are garbage, flag it with me. I will tell you what to do in that scenario. And that's it. 5.39. We killed it today. Um, obviously, we're getting to a point in the course where... You guys don't need to be babysat through a whole bunch of this. So I'm trying to get the streams down to a point where I tell you the things I need you to know. And then I use them to answer questions. Obviously, as we reapproach, you know, final reports and demo days and stuff like that, the streams will grow again to be at a point where I'm answering all of your questions. Because you know, we were doing assessment two reviews. Those questions were coming thick and fast for two hours straight. And that's totally fine. I'm 100% happy to answer them. So for now, I will answer, yeah, we, yes, Noah, wait, what, 40 minutes? Um, well, let, let's, let's check. If anybody has any questions about assessment three, about assessment four, if I can help you with your projects in any way, I don't really know how I'm going to do that over here, but if I can, anything and all I can help you with, please chuck it in the chat now. If you're feeling all over this, well done. You've kicked ass for the last seven weeks. Great work, really great work. Have fun doing several assessments tomorrow and then enjoy your break, everybody. You guys have been wonderful. So thank you. Please throw your questions in and I will I will stick around and answer them for as long as there are questions coming thick and fast. But if you are done, you are done. Go have a beer. Just got in. So it's still due Tuesday next week. Yeah, 100%, Jamie. Uh, and that's all. That should be in... There it is. That should be in Canvas now. You should be able to see that fact. It should say due in X number of days.
Do we get a reimbursement for the prototype budget? Keep all your receipts no matter what. As long as you come in under like 100 bucks, you'll get it all reimbursed no matter what. Because, yeah. So keep all your receipts no matter what. Total budget for the civil project, uh, that depends. At the moment, it's $100, but uh, why do you think you want more? Convince me why your project should get more funding, and I may give your project more funding. When can we, our feedback? When, when you will you get to see your feedback? So as I said, uh, this is due at Tuesday uh, at midnight, well, one minute before midnight. As soon as it rolls around past midnight, you should be able to view your feedback then. That is my understanding. If you can't view it Wednesday morning, let me know and I will make it available. Wednesday the 17th, you should be able to view it then. With the mech project, do we have to include tools to remove the PMG for maintenance in the package and the budget? Good question. Good question. How often do you think it would need to be maintained? How expensive would those tools be? How often, how long lasting is the rest of your design going to be? If you are going to make something that's going to last a whole year, but you think the generator has to get replaced every four weeks, A, insulate the generator better. But B, yeah, absolutely include those tools. That's a really good idea. And talk to me about the fact of, hey, client, you should be sending five spare generators with every one of these things out. You should be packing them in the shipping box. And you'll probably be able to convince me that that's a good idea. If, on the other hand, you've got a turbine that's going to fall to bits in the rain in a week, which may be fine because maybe you're only trying to provide emergency power. A week's probably not great, but, you know, it's a short-lived product. Maybe you're less worried about changing generators out there. You'd have to you'd have to try and make that case to me. You you should prepare that argument yourself and try and figure out what you think the best thing to do for your system as a solution is, and then pitch that to me and say, Dylan, this is the right thing to do, and try and convince me of that fact. It's a good question. If we buy a CNC mill for the project and spend 50k, then you will own your very own CNC mill, and I will be very impressed by you, and you will not claim any of it back. <laughs> Remote energy systems is supposed to be mechanical, you are correct. Mention it as a comment, Patrick, and proceed as normal. Yes, thank you, Patrick. I, I acknowledge and I appreciate that fact. Received a message about a new component called the motor speed tracker. Will all students doing the robot project be supplied this after the two-week break? Uh, no, if you want it, you can have it, but you don't need to have it. You can ignore it if you want to ignore it, but I've, I've said I'll be available. I was available today for people to collect them. I'll be available at two o'clock tomorrow for people to collect them. You can have one if you want one. You're not required to have one. I would get one. You bought a Pi Pico board, Gabriel. Is there a website to buy the kit for the robot? Mm, no. What? Don't don't do that. Don't buy it. Ask. Hmm. Put together a list, Gabriel, put together a list of what you want and come to me tomorrow with an ask and convince me to give you a bunch of spare parts. I'm not saying I will. I'm saying you may, I will give you the opportunity to convince you, to for you to convince me to give you a bunch of spare parts for free. If you can make a good enough argument as to why you deserve them, I may give them to you. We'll see. Is solar decal supposed to be decal? Yeah, they're just decal. So I put it somewhere, right? I I made this post. Where did I make this post? Maybe I need to move it. Mm 
Where is it? Here they are. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do I want to call this? Project names. Huh. Boom. It's now in A3 FAQs are all the names for all the projects. Cool. Is there anything else I can help anybody with? This is the greatest stream ever. I'm not sweating constantly and about to die. Do figures include equations? No. So, equations are different. Equations are not something we got to in the weeds about for this particular report, but equations are different. So what equations should be, not that we made this a requirement for this report, but an equation should be centered and it should have an equation number off to the side and it should not have a caption. Equations are dealt with differently to figures and differently to tables. Um, it is discussed in the week five lecture. It's in there. But yeah, equations don't get captions. They do get numbers. The numbers are supposed to be off to the side, but I did not make that a requirement for this report. I will be making it a requirement for the final report. And I will probably make a small video on exactly how to do that. But for now, you don't have to stress about it. What should you do for your birthday in the break? You know what I did for my birthday? It was like last week. I took an entire day where I didn't speak to another human being for any reason. It was glorious. I never answered a message on my phone. I know. I actually know. I did answer a bunch of Discord messages. I answered a bunch of your questions, but other than that, I never spoke to another human being, and it was glorious. Is it fine to give a personal rank in the how appropriately did this person write for a new team member? Like, I would personally say this report is around a blah out of 10. Yeah, you could. My, my problem, I guess, with that is how does that help the person on the receiving end? And this is actually one of my huge issues with how report feedback is normally provided to students in general. When you just get a mark saying, here, four out of 10, you're bad at this. And I'm on the, I then being on the receiving end are like, well, yeah, I know I'm bad at this. How do I do better? So, or inversely, right? Eight out of 10, you did pretty good. Like, okay, I did good, but what did I do good? Why didn't I get 10 out of 10? What could I do better next time? I don't necessarily have a problem with you doing that. Is it valuable? Can you make it more valuable? And then I think that would be fine. I also saw a website for the track at the print shop. I didn't know they had that still. Okay. Will it work if I print the uh, track in A4 paper at home and tape them together? Absolutely. So that track has been specifically designed for you to be able to do that on a... Oh, there's a... On a printer. I don't know if you guys can actually see what I'm pointing at there. Uh, to be printed on an inkjet printer at home. Uh, absolutely, you can definitely do that. Is the only marking we have to do the one in Canvas under A2 and A3? Uh, yes, in that when you go into that portal, you should have five reports that you have to mark. When you do that, each of those reports should have two different marking rubrics, the formatting rubric and the content rubric, plus a short answer question on how well did they do the target audience plus another short answer question that links you to a Microsoft form where you rank everybody. So you have to do all of those things. 
if you've done all of those things, then you're good. You're golden. But yeah, make sure you do you do all of those things. It should give you like a little progress bar that tells you where you're up to. The only thing to be aware of is that progress bar isn't actually checking whether you filled out the Microsoft form or not. I'm checking that manually. So please make sure you do that. But yeah, it should all sort of happen from that portal. I did also provide feedback along with the rank on each section and then some other criteria to explain why it was that. Yeah, then I think that's probably good benchman returns. I think that's a, a very valid thing to do. It can be nice to put a number to things because sometimes you're like, hey, here's a bunch of things you could have done better. Bang, 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 bang. But you still did a great job, 9 out of 10. Can be quite nice so that those critiques don't come through as massive criticisms it can be quite good Whew. cool anything else i can help you guys with or are you all good What would I classify as a non-attempt? Um, something that's maybe two or three pages long. Something where you're genuinely struggling to fill out the rubric because you don't have enough content to fill it out. If they haven't done like one section, then you can just give them zero for that section. But if you're sitting there going, I don't even know how the hell to provide feedback to this person. They've, they've written two pages on stuff I can't understand or stuff that they didn't even write themselves. If you're at the point you're struggling to give feedback, I might consider that a non-attempt. You can just download the document, send it to me, or DM it to me and say, hey, Dylan, do you consider this a, a non-attempt, or is this fine? And I'll, I'll just be like, quick scan, yeah, it's fine, go for it, or no, you can just give that all zeros across the board. All right, well, happy days. I am going to give you guys an extra hour back of your life. Please go and enjoy it. Please, if you haven't finished your assessment three, maybe use this next hour to go and smash out as much of that as you can and try and get into the break with at least as little, as few bits of Eng1500 hanging over your head as possible. <laughs> on, on that nice note, Matthew, <laughs> pain... I will say good night to all of you. Go smash your assessment three out. Have a good break, everybody. You'll hear from me. I'll keep you updated periodically through the break. If you have questions, feel free to chuck them in Discord. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Good night, everybody. <laughs>